Perfidious Pete here, back to shill for more wildly inappropriate products than a down-on-his-luck Shaquille O'Neal in XCOM War of the Chosen. That's right, Shaq, I'm coming for you. I know you have a pretty low threshold when it comes to the shilling, because, you know, you'll pimp for uh, Dolan's pills, headache powders, rent-to-own furniture stores, title loan places. Shaquille O'Neal doesn't care much about his image anymore these days. Or rather, the only image that Shaquille O'Neal actually gives a shit about is the image of the check he took with the camera on his phone, and whether or not that image was clear enough for the check to do the same. I was pimping for Vagisil last episode, though, and you know what, Shaq? I think I may have one-upped you, because I don't have a vagina. Pete, why are you pimping for Vagisil, then? Doesn't seem like a product targeted to dudes. But what if you're an aging relief pitcher or starting pitcher with the unlikely first name of Chelsea who needs another two to three inches drop on your curveball? If you are, Perfidious Pete recommends Vagisil, because it'll give you that two to three inches of drop, and we all know Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball. Also, I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit of a dream of mine to see Shaquille O'Neal in a, a commercial for a feminine hygiene product. There's got to be a point at which he just says, you know what, fuck it, there's enough zeros on the check. And I want to know what that number is, because I want to see Shaq pimping for, like, Massengill douche, or, you know, Vagisil to relieve that minor feminine itching and irritation. Something along those lines. It's, it is a dream of mine. Somebody's like, Pete, you dream about Vagisil? I think, okay, you got me. I do, in fact, dream about it. But where's the line, Shaquille O'Neal? And when do we get to the point, more importantly, where eventually Shaquille O'Neal just has a crusty the crown clown style, I heartily endorse this event or product thing that just appears at the end of whatever shitty product somebody wrote him a big check to endorse today. I can't wait for that day. I can't wait for that day. So Iceman, who's your bro? Jim Morrison, the Lizard King. All right. Oh, the Lizard King is tired. Well, how come, you, how come you're sleepy, Jim Morrison? It seems like you should have dropped enough tabs of LSD to choke a horse. I guess you're out then. We'll take Chris Knight instead. Give me the real genius. Simon Templar, you're all hooked up with Bruce Wayne, and he's no good. So give me the janitor then. Who else we got? Nick Top Secret Rivers, he'll do. Ray Leovi, he'll, I mean, we can fit him in in a pinch. We have a lieutenant now. Can we get a sixth? Hold on one second here. Just, I'll, I'll be back for you, Haven. Don't don't think I've given up on you. Actually, Bruce Wayne has recovered from his wounds in the nine seconds they took us to do that. You thought you could decommission, didn't you, by him? And he'd be like, oh, my knee hurts. I got to go have Fox make me a new break. No, bullshit. We're on to your scheme, Bruce Wayne. But what I really want to do is come to the GTS facility and see if we can get our sixth trooper. We need a captain. All right, we're going to have to get Iceman promoted above Lieutenant Dan. He's got to get bumped up one more grade to become Tom Skerritt, I guess. Who, the evil Go-Go's? They're no friends of mine. I prefer the regular Go-Go's. Cruel Summer was fine. Dismal Summer just sounds like a bad vacation. What I did on my summer vacation, it was dismal. I was in summer school. Well, we can take the Batman then, so I guess that's going to change our lineup a little bit. Let's grab Simon Templar. Let's grab the Batman. I'm still taking the genius Chris Knight, and I'm still pulling in the janitor. We're going to bring in some high caliber talent on this one, but I think we can also probably afford to fit in a little bit of lower caliber talent. Who's got to be close? Doc Holliday, you got to be close to getting that bump to Sergeant. He's my Huckleberry, and this is just my game. I trust Doc Holliday. Yeah, make utility items available, make weapons available. Also, between episodes, I did go Google and figure out what kind of research we need to do. Turns out, Celestial Gauntlets upgrade as your armor upgrades. So this entire time, we've been wasting researching Gauss weaponry. We wasted some time researching whatever it is we're working on now. Psionics, I think. Yeah, it's actually plated armor. Because... You know, it makes perfect sense when I think of stabbing implements and weapons. You no, know, we will give somebody AP rounds. I suppose those can apply to the auto pistol. That'll help us take out purifiers maybe a little bit better. If we're going to trust somebody with a gun, though, that somebody should not be Bruce Wayne. He's already shown a remarkable proclivity for not wanting to shoot things. I will not become the monster. Oh, wait, sorry. Pete, do the Batman voice. I won't become a monster like Joe Chill. There you go. I feel better now. 
if you're gonna do the Batman, you, you gotta go whole hog, man. You gotta do the Batman voice. I do find it amusing that even though prior to the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, they never had Batman do a weird voice. But now in the aftermath, Zack Snyder even has Ben Affleck, who, by the way, had there not been a George Clooney already, would have been the Batman in Batman Forever. Or Batman and Robin. Yeah. Not Val Kilmer was Batman Forever. And he, you know, Ben Affleck probably could have filled in, in that role, too. But they've, they've even got him doing it, even though it's sh just super inappropriate. Be like, no, the, the Christopher Nolan movies were, were good, good movies, and we want to try and ride that wave with our shitty, shitty movies. We're trying to cash a check that we definitely shouldn't try and cash. We know this bad boy's going to bounce, but we're going to try and cash that check of audience goodwill that Christopher Nolan built up. Just have him do the voice. Nobody will notice that uh, the script is not good and that the performances are wooden and that nobody really seems to care and that somebody really should fucking stop Zack Snyder. As long as he does the voice, no one's gonna notice. You know what? DC? We noticed, though. We noticed. Okay, so we got civilians. We're gonna have an uh, giant cadre of resistance troopers helping fight for us. What's up, boys? We got our momentum move available. We do not have concealment, so any enemies that we spawn, we are going to have to deal with. Our goal then should just be to try and not spawn any enemies and make sure that Simon Megas has cover at the end of this move. If we do happen to spawn a pod, which we didn't, but had we, you know, gotten a little unlucky and spawned one, we could have used our bonus move to dig ourselves out of trouble with that. In the meantime, I think everybody just advances at full speed. The janitor's got some legs on him, man. All those countless hours pushing a broom have really paid off in the cardio department. Here we go. We get a muton. He's going to shoot a civilian. I'm sorry, Stefan Hahn. Stefan Hahn is down, by the way. Stefan Hahn is down. Throw a grenade at him, though. Well, his armor stopped most of that. And it's probably going to stop most of that, too. It did soften him up a little bit to where we might be able to get him in the range of dead if we can get somebody over there to him. Do we have anybody fast enough? Doc Holliday is actually... No, we don't. The answer the problem that we have no one who is fast enough. Literally no one. Well, what can we do then? We got a sectoid over here who also we are probably not going to have anybody fast enough to get to. Uh, you know, we might actually, we can probably take a shot at that sectoid, and the janitor's got a better than average chance of killing him. So let's just take it to our Chuckles the Muton over here and put some work on him. Agreed. What's up, Chuckles? You don't seem that agile. Can he dodge grenades? Activate and come at me, bro. Oh, that's right, and bring your little friend, too. Well, thanks for making my job easy. We're just going to whip this over here at this man. Doc Holliday, well noted for his use of grenades, by the way. It's a little known historical fact that Doc Holliday was, in fact, a colonial grenadier. I think we... Ah, uh, we're going to have a serious problem with Mr. Muton over here, though, because if we go try and attack him, he's going to attack us back, and we have no focus. Right. I forgot about that. Well, we could throw a incendiary grenade at him and set him on fire. I don't necessarily hate that plan. We are in full cover right now, so if we're going to do it, this is the spot from which to do it, I guess. We really need to slag some of that armor. Well, we got one damage, shredded one point of armor, and we set him on fire. Where's our boy with the uh, AP ammo? Gallagher, you have the sustain ability, but we're going to need you to come over here and kill that. we got other plans for you. The Templar might also be able to get in on it. So, Bruce Wayne, you could give a bonus action to somebody who does not need it. Then we got the Janitor. Simon Templar, your bonus action goes to Bruce Wayne. We can't really trust Batman with guns, though. He's proven completely inept. Well, no, I don't really want to rend him, though. I'd, I'd prefer to... Oh, Batman, you're so bad at shooting, though. 
he's, he's terrible at it. Just terrible. Terrible. He's terrible, Pete. I suppose we could bring the saint up here and have him maybe. I don't, you know what? We'd really probably just be better off to have him go ahead and throw another grenade. And now we've got too many people active and too many shooters here. It's time for an active shooter drill. Well, Simon Magus, you're not going to give a shit on that muton. Come over here and chop this sectoid into chunklets and get into... You didn't kill him, though. Well, get into parry mode, because you're almost certainly getting shot. Batman, I don't know if you're going to be able to do anything about that muton. We could come throw another grenade at him. You could come finish off the sectoid and go into parry mode. That's probably our best bet. We gotta, we gotta use what we got. We don't have a lot of tools at our disposal. We gotta make use of them. Here comes the slice. We couldn't have got that eight damage on the first hit. And you're definitely gonna be parrying at the end of this. So parry it up. We could either have the janitor go in hard, go in deep, or we can have him come up here, take cover behind this rock and just throw a grenade. I kind of feel like maybe we just have him throw a grenade and hope the resistance can finish this dude off. He is on fire, which limits the options he has at his disposal when it comes to actions. We should get a little bit of damage and some shred out of this. I'm not super happy. Mutons are going to be a big problem for us throughout the campaign. I had forgotten about their counterattack ability. That's really going to cause us some issues. He should not be able to throw a grenade at us because he is on fire. He's going to shoot a civilian. I'd say that's acceptable behavior, except, I mean, it's very clearly not acceptable behavior. Young man, you go to your room and think about what you did. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne's getting shot. Or he's getting unspeakably lucky. That was actually Doc Holliday. No wonder he stood so strong at the OK Corral. Homeboy's unhittable. This should be getting parried. Never mind, Stanislav Vaklaw was just shot in the brain. I love the enemy's proclivity to just ignore our parrying guys, even though they're out in the open and begging to be killed. You couldn't have shot the Muton, though. The one guy I have a really hard time dealing with, that's the guy you decide not to shoot, eh? Solid thinking. Solid thinking. Well, we need to kill this man, and pretty much anybody can do it. Now, Doc Holliday, get over here. Murder what's left of this guy for... You know what? Finish the job you should have finished earlier. Yeah, your shame. That's what's over here. I have found my ineptitude. Here it is. I am, in fact, bad at my job. There's a reason why I became a gunfighter instead of staying a dentist. I just, you know, I tried the whole dentistry thing. It turns out I was real bad at it. Like, people just kept a lot of lawsuits. A lot of people walking out of my office just mouths gorged in blood. And finally, they had enough of it. Put that muton in the dirt. Batman, who should we have killed this man? Somebody who doesn't have focus should probably come and try to get some focus. Simon Templar, murder this man. We need the bonus damage because we have yet to research our celestial gauntlets. The yeah, all we have to do now is find a way to deal with like 30 other supremely high health targets. It's going to be real easy, I'm sure. We need to get in there before the aliens slaughter those people. Oh, that guy's really motoring, though. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up. You see him? He's moving like a Heisman Trophy winner on his way to murder his wife. Which is to say, you know, quick. Never say the juice didn't have any juice when motivated. Usually his motivation was stab, 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 stab. I actually read a thing not too long ago where the, somebody did an in-depth analysis of the whole O.J. Simpson thing. And they made, I won't say a good case, but they made a pretty compelling case uh, about the fact that... OJ may not have done it. In fact, it may have been OJ's son that did it. And OJ just kind of took the rap to protect his kid. And while it still makes him a scumbag, you, maybe... Peter, you're just about to say maybe you got to respect what OJ did. No, I can't do that in good conscience, but I maybe it makes it easier to understand if that's really what happened. And that the guy who wrote that uh, piece I read wasn't just a paid spin doctor trying to make OJ look a little bit less like a shit heel. I said a little bit less. There's no way to not make OJ a shit heel. Regardless of how you slice it, he's a shit heel anyway. 
But maybe you can make them a little less despicable. This area. The janitor, why don't you get up here and... Never mind. I was going to say get up here and clean up some of this mess, but... I think we're just going to take this a little slow. We don't know what's up here. If history has taught me anything, though, it's like probably a couple berserkers and some stun lancers. Well, we got the stun lancers and spades. Sitting here picking off civilians left and right. What do you got? Another stun. It's just stun lancers, huh? What you got is a gun sight that's pulling about 18 feet to the left. Start returning fire here, boys. Tell me where the enemies are. That guy's sight's spot the fuck on. Seriously, though, bring these guys in. The resistance is lights out gunshots. These guys never miss, though. If our troopers were only half as accurate as these guys, we'd never have a problem. What are you doing there, Resistance Rick? Greasing himself another stun lancer, that's what. He's putting him in the dirt. We're going to have to advance a little more quickly then. Uh, come up here and take cover behind this burning tire. Just pretend you're at a NASCAR event. It'll be fine. I really don't like having you take cover next to an exploding gas pump, but what are you going to do? There's no other cover available. Pete, you know, there's no enemy spawn. You could just not take cover. Heresy. That's heresy, though. See what happens when you think thought begets heresy, heresy begets retribution, and then suddenly you're faced off against a bunch of stun lancers. Who are furiously murdering civilians at an extraordinarily alarming pace. And they brought a robot. Uh, that's bad. On the plus side, these guys should only get a scamper move since they did wander into us. That robot's going to be a real problem, though. Also, triple stun lancer pod is likewise a problem. This civilian's got the greatest cover of all time, though. Those guys just keep whiffing. Well, one of them is dead. I'm telling you, resistance troopers do not miss. They don't miss, ever. Thanks for making me look like an asshole, game. Appreciate it. Oh, back-to-back -back misses, huh? No, that's fine. Uh, I, I, I guess I just don't get to be right about anything. Critical shot, try to make up for it. It didn't quite do it. Batman, I think we're just going to have you come rend this stun lancer and then probably parry since you do not have a grenade. Does anybody over here still have a remaining grenade? We would love to have them throw a grenade if they've got one at that robot. Not going to happen, though. So since we can't grenade the robot, what we should do is come rend the soldier twice, go double parry, get our focus up. We can parry grenades if we have to. Immediately go parry mode. Bruce, get over here, finish the kill for starters, and then make yourself attractive to that robot. Maybe, I don't know, make yourself attractive to the robot. Put on a wig and some lipstick or something. You know. You're Bruce Wayne, the world's greatest detective. You're a master of disguise. Come up with something. Can't make a robot want to kiss you a little bit? Or maybe, you know, like hard on the mouth? I see the path. If you can't get a robot to kiss you hard on the mouth, you don't deserve the title of world's greatest detective. You really don't. I can do that. We're going to stay over here out of line of sight of... Potential foes. We know there are stun lancers in that garage. We mostly just want to get away from the gas tanks. And the faceless. Admittedly, we should like to avoid those as well. This is going to be issue. Shoot that faceless for me. I'm sorry, Farasani. Keisha got it. They gave it to her. You better shoot at these men who are in the open, or I'm going to be furious. Yeah, get wrecked. See what happens when you shoot at the bat? Reload and fire, though. Work that faceless over. You guys should all have quality shots at that faceless who is unchecked. Work him over. Well, the critical on the Stun Lancer is nice, but not really what we needed. What about that Faceless, though? Gonna keep shooting at the Stun Lancers, huh? The ones back there, I'd line of sight and full cover while this 
Faceless just rips your people apart. Just gonna let him shred them like weed, eh? Alright, that's good strategy. I mean, let's see how it works out for him, Cotton. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. So there is a faceless, I'm pretty sure, in that tile. Open this door. You guys should not get a reaction move, really. I'm actually a little salty about that. We're gonna have a difficult time killing this man. We don't have enough focus. Anybody can take. We gotta. We gotta have to save something for the faceless too. We're probably gonna need a bonus action on this one. Batman, who's your bonus action boy? Yeah, but the fact that you guys are working in tandem is definitely not good for us. We need that bonus action over here, though. We can't get everybody. So what we need to do is have everybody dash in. Okay, everybody's going to have to parry somebody. Everybody parries somebody sometime. Real genius. Come and murder this man. We know there's a faceless over here. Get gutted. Give us some focus. No momentum moves. The resistance is going to have to tank this one for us. I hate to do it to your resistance team. I'm sorry. But it's uh, it's got to be done. Janitor, come over here. You're going to rend this man. This will not kill him. But we don't need to kill him. All we really need to do is just stand next to him, look threatening, and go into momentum mode. Meanwhile, Doc Holiday, get in here, find the Faceless. Our goal is to try and make the Faceless swing in a direction that kills no additional civilians. So we're going to come in behind him, throw the rend, hit him for six damage, get our focus, and then we're going to go parry mode and try to make him swing at us. And that means everybody on Team Pete is now unhittable or will be at the end of this. And we should be able to kill this robot as well. Petey's got armor. It shouldn't matter. We can actually shut him down. I didn't even know that worked. The Celestial Gauntlets can shut down a robot? That's amazing. I've never... How have I never hit a robot with one of those guys before? Also, he's just straight up dead, so barely matters. Promotion for the bat? Nice. I would have loved it to have been pretty much anybody else. You're going to shoot a civilian, aren't you? You piece of dog shit. Yeah, you know what? That's what you get for being a trolling bastard. You better swing a Doc Holliday. Yeah, get parried. Also, thanks for making a new door. Only a little. Don't steal my kill, bro. Don't steal my kill, bro. Come on, bro. Don't steal my kill. I need those kills. He's gonna, gonna steal my kill. Don't steal my kill, bro. Yeah, shoot these guys. It's not even kill stealing up here because you've done all the work. You can take this kill with full faith and credit. See, you don't have to feel bad about that one at all. You earned that one. That's just solid XCOMing right there. And in the, speaking of solid XCOMing, no, we want to like to rend this man, but I can't rend him from any tile other than this one, huh? What if I move first? Can I rend him now? Yeah, that's what I would like to do. Let's just rend him. Get ripped in half. The man has been torn asunder. Picking up another jolt to focus. You know, we don't really need the parry here. I'm going to go ahead and take the momentum swing. And let's get a little closer to where we know there are other enemies. We know there's a pot of stun lancers back there. Doc Holiday, head up here. And this man into chunkles. Oh, that faceless is going to pay the price, though. Doc Holiday does not mess around. And that's a promotion for the big Dr. Holiday, too. He'll be ripping teeth with more fury than any man has ever torn teeth from a skull. So you guys are up here. We don't want to activate you if we can avoid it, but we do want to get a little closer. 
We could continue to let the resistance do our dirty work for us. We're not going to be able to get much closer without spawning them. I think we go ahead and play the patience game here. Real genius, I'm just going to bring you over here as well. If we need to, my goal is to actually just run in there and be able to zap these dudes with all of our charged up lightning juice. We've been Johnny B. Gooden it over here, charging up the old lightning. Working some sweet guitar riffs. We got a full charge. We're ready to let it loose. By the way, Johnny B. Good was the only good member of the Misfits of Science. All of the rest of them had terrible powers, but Johnny was, I mean, he was the heart and soul of that team. Thanks for softening them up for us a little bit. Appreciate it. If your buddy could chip in a little bit of softening agent here as well. Give him a little bit of that uh, fabric softening bear. There you go. Give him a little bit of snuggle. Now we got to go in deep. Though. We got to go in. got to go in hard. Simon Templar, spawn that pod. We're trying to do this with the Batman pod because one of these guys would, if we need it, they will have at their disposal a bonus action. Is it seriously just the one guy, though? Oh, well, never mind. I thought you had a friend. I guess all of your friends are dead. Yep, all of his rowdy friends were already killed. Yeah, we've stopped the eagle evil go-go scheme. There's no dismal summer. It's back to just a cruel, cruel summer. As we all had hoped. So many years. It's a cruel, cruel summer. It kind of makes me want to make a movie with Kate Bosworth in it where she's a surfer and... Uh, had a tragic surfing accident and now her confidence is shattered but if only she could get back out there and catch a few sweet waves her confidence would be restored and also she might fall in love with the professional football player because you know her surfing career is irrelevant as long as she gets the manages to bag that nfl gravy train that's what the movie's really about you know bradford you say you're continually impressed but i also thought that our boys here were going to struggle a little bit. I've been pleasantly surprised with the lack of struggling. Yeah, we definitely want Bladestorm, though. So we'll go ahead and take Deflect, and if our choices are spend two points on Bladestorm or not spend two points on Bladestorm, guess which one we're going to do? Yep. Well, Batman, what do you got? Uh, well, it's going to be more of the same, except Batman doesn't even have to spend any bonus points. He just gets it and has points left to spare because Batman is a gifted soldier. And old Doc Holiday. It seems sort of appropriate that Doc Holiday would get all the Pistolier traits. Lightning Hands is pretty good. It's pretty good for two reasons. One, well, first off, we're definitely taking overcharge because it's awesome. But it does give us the opportunity for Doc to run in, soften a man up with his Lightning Hands, and then rend him. So he might be able to generate a one-turn kill. He doesn't have Blade Storm, which admittedly is a bit of a problem, but I think we go ahead and take Lightning Hands here. We will still have enough ability points banked that if we run into a situation where Batman and Simon and Magus both need to become Blade Stormers again, we can we can chip a few points in to pick it up. Utah Autopsy is available. All that does for us is unlock grenades. Mech Breakdown, I don't think, does anything for us in this campaign. To you, Commander. You have still managed to exceed my expectations. Your expectations must have been shockingly low, Optimus Prime. Which, you know, for once I'm not firing shots at you. Having shockingly low expectations, that's like right up my alley. I actually prefer that you keep your expectations low. You keep them low enough and occasionally I might stumble over the bar. It suits me, like, perfect. We don't... They keep trying to give us supplies and we don't need supplies. Let's go hit this Distress Beacon, pick up our scientists. This is going to amp up our research so we can get through plated armor faster. Because I'm an idiot, and all the time we wasted on Gauss weaponry and whatever it is we're researching now, by the way. Cyan well, Cyanix, I mean, it technically isn't a waste. I'm almost tempted to put that on hold, though. Dr. Jacob Jablonski. Hey, Dr. Jablonski, you're not allowed to put the... Who's the bad guy from Hulk Comp? Dr. Samson. Wasn't his actual name Jablonski? I'm pretty sure Dr. Samson's real name is Jablonski. Or was that the name of the guy who became the Abomination? I may be confusing him with Tim Roth. We still haven't visited the black market. 
I kind of don't feel compelled to go visit the black market, but we definitely don't want supplies. The other thing we could do is make contact with the eastern U.S. Or we could make contact with New Brazil, which is the only way for us to get to our one confirmed location. We don't have a continent bonus yet, or even know what the continent bonus for the United States is, but I am tempted to make contact with... You know what? Let's see. There's got to be something going on. Like, we can still get to... Well, it's a more roundabout path, admittedly. We can't go directly there. We only know the one facility, huh? We... Ah, we don't need a... We don't need a safety valve. Let's go make contact with the Eastern U.S. For one, this only costs 40 intel, whereas going down here, if we come down to Brazil, it's going to cost us a little bit more. I don't even know if we have resistance radio yet. I don't think we've actually discovered it yet. Like, we left Zach De La Roca on his own. We're, no, it's, it's good. Why don't you be over there? Just the machine is that way. Go forth, Zach, and rage. Should be our end of a month. I had high hopes for the resistance under your leadership, Commander, and you Wait. have outdone yourself. Wait, which one is it, Optimus Prime? Do you have low expectations or high expectations? You keep confusing me. But this is something else entirely. You're immune to explosions now? I find that that's going to be exactly zero relevant. Let me know when you're immune to sword. That's going to be a problem. What if we get a chosen who's immune to melee, though? Like, that guy's gonna basically be unbeatable for us. Had not considered that. Aliens are about to construct a new facility that's gonna give them a pip of Avatar Project progress. New construction is the one we should probably stop if we get the option to. Alloy padding will be a little troublesome for us, but probably not the end of the world. I really like the abilities we're currently rolling. The hidden reserves is not terrible. We're in no rush to get any of this other stuff, bro. Recruiting a Reaper I don't care about, but I do like the fact that this has promotion available. Did we just finish a covert action? Hold on a second. Have we been sitting with no covert action? Just, I am an idiot. Like We could have been getting this promotion the whole time, though. We can counter the chosen activity. Also comes with the promotion. Reducing the Avatar Project progress does not come with promotion. Okay, you know what? We will counter chosen activity. I had a soldier here. Who's that soldier gonna be? Your boy is still tired, though. Jim Morrison? No, Jim Morrison's back. He's ready to work. Do we send the Iceman and the Lizard? They're like our heaviest hitters, though. We could send Doc Holliday and the Janitor. We want at least one blade, man. You know what? No, send Ice. Actually, you know what? We gotta send Ice Man anyway, because he's the one who wants the promotion. We send Ice Man, get him the promotion, and we send him with Jim Morrison, the Lizard King, to go forth and Lizard. And we will pay 25 intel to negate the chance that somebody gets captured on this one. We get Ice Man on this mission out there, get him back. We get a promotion, we get our six troopers, and we've fallen into the Homer Simpson paradigm. First you get the sugar, then you get the power, then you get the women. These findings will likely prove crucial to our ongoing efforts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be relevant at all, but if you think they're crucial, don't. Training center construction? Yeah, I'm going to say no to that and just go like right into the old plated armor here. Priority. Thanks. Could you have made it our highest priority earlier when we didn't know what it was that actually upgraded our celestial gauntlets? Couldn't you have just been like, you know, Pete, plated armor should probably be your highest priority because it's the research that actually does what you're trying to do. Maximum power consumption reached. That's okay. So we got an empty hole over here. We can come down here and probably dig on this exposed power coil. It seems like our next best move. It gets us 22 Illyrium crystals. Hanson, Robinson, grab the shovels, get to work. More importantly, it gives us the opportunity to build a facility because we can build one there that won't require power. We can't deepen this bond because we don't have a training center yet. That's something we sort of need to work on. We have the money, we don't have the power. We could upgrade our power relay. Actually, I lied when I said we had the money. We kind of don't. We just need to assign an engineer here. We, You know what? We're building the workshop. As soon as the workshop is finished in 10 days, that engineer becomes not really a problem anymore. We'll have some staffing gremlins go over there. We can trade one engineer for effectively two engineers. 
I'm content to just let this one roll for a while. The training center is not game-breaking for us. Once again, Skip Bradford is on the scene. His younger, more handsome, vastly more sober brother to try and convince these people that joining the resistance isn't the worst idea they've ever had. Can now go to Western Europe. I'm in no rush to go to Western Europe. And we have found the Mind Eater. Con Il Mordena. The mi you know, I liked it better when you were the Soul Butcher. It was a much more imposing nickname. It really was. We don't need to view the infirmary. We know what goes on there. We will go get these supplies because now we're at the point where we actually need them. And maybe we'll go scan for supplies as well. We could use those. Mostly, we just want Iceman to come back with that promotion and also a live goose and be like, no, it was a mistake. He was alive the whole time. When uh, Maverick was cradling his head in that pool of dye in the ocean, turns out he was he was fine. He was faking it. The guy was just, uh, it, was, it was an insurance scam. That's what it was. The whole thing, patented classic insurance scam. Goose was just trying to find an easy way out of his marriage to Meg Ryan. Because he realized that the true love of his life was Tom Cruise and that they should be destined to be together forever. But they were both in the military and they couldn't figure out a way at the time for their love to be. Because it was sort of a don't ask, don't tell kind of thing. Alien facility coordinates locked in, Commander. Alright, let's hope it's close by. It's nowhere close, though. Can we get over there? We'd have to go through New Brazil. All the Okay, so that's like inconveniently placed. But that's the thing. Goose just faked his death so that he and Maverick could be together and that their love could blossom. Avatar Project picking up another pip of progress. Don't worry, Bradford. We're going to beat that progress right back down. We're, we're fine, John. We're, we're going to put it right back in the dirt as soon as we get this counterintelligence thing happening. That's all right. I've got other plans for you anyway. So we stopped your brutal crackdown on the resistance and prevented you from permanently lowering XCOM's income. More importantly, the Iceman promoted you know, we'll be back to the whole recruit a reaper that we probably will do and then immediately fire. First off, though, Iceman, what you got? Reflect. Reflect is interesting. Invert is also interesting. Deep focus is actually astounding, though. We're going to go deep focus. And we'll build up some AP. I don't dislike Reflect. I think it's actually a very good ability. Whenever we deflect one, we can bounce it back into the enemy. You need a chip to get in. Bradford, you what so you're just mad because they wouldn't stamp your hand, John? Is that what it is? I I detect a I got like a real kind of sour grapes sort of vibe coming off you, John. It's just like you're mad that you're not part of the it crowd. You know what? We only need one soldier to go do this. Iceman, you be that soldier. Go forth. We'll get the job done. Don't worry, Commander. I, I mean, I wasn't worried. It's Iceman. He gets jobs done, even if that job is somehow finding a way to kill an ally without winding up brought up on charges. He's really good at that. So, yes. And also, yes. Now all of our Templars start with one additional focus and... We got an extra Templar to throw at every mission. This baby's really starting to roll, man. I'm starting to feel it. I'm starting to feel it a little bit. Okay, so we got some guerrilla ops. This is going to be our next mission. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Psionic Storm. High level of psionic enemies present. That counters the hidden dark event. We don't really care about that one. Alloy padding is mildly annoying, but... Where it looks like we're going to New Mexico then because the one that we want well one it gives us an engineer Which we kind of need but two reduces the alien facility counter by two weeks. That is very useful Keeping the doom counter under control early ah, would be nice to pick up a scientist. I Kind of feel like actually we need an engine. We need an engineer more at this point We'll be back for this guerrilla operation, but that guerrilla operation is gonna have to take place next episode This one is done if you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like. Scene indicates the chosen aren't going to stop hunting us, Commander. Everything I've seen also indicates that you'll never stop interrupting my outro segues, John. So you know what? I guess we both have burdens to bear, don't we? 
If you enjoyed it, drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to watch me bear my burden on a daily basis, you might consider subscribing as well, because John Bradford sure is not going anywhere. Right now, thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.